Waves are like the backbone of physics. There isn't a module in physics that you'll take that doesn't refer to waves in some way. So whether it's mechanics, optics, thermodynamics, quantum mechanics, electricity and magnetism, even astrophysics, waves are going to keep appearing and we need to be prepared for that. This is why it's a required practical in the UK for students to be able to measure and characterise waves so that we get that good understanding right from the get-go. I'm going to run through how to do the required practical on the mini ripple tank, which offers you all of the learning outcomes without the hassle of the setup. The three key properties we need are wavelength, frequency and wave speed. So let's head to the whiteboard for some definitions. I've drawn a sinusoidal waveform and the definition of wavelength is the length of one full cycle. So we need to go through one peak and one trough and then that will be the wavelength from the origin. We don't have to measure it from the origin. We can go from peak to peak, for example, so that would also be one wavelength. Or we can go from trough to trough, that would also be a wavelength. So that distance that distance and this distance here are all equal and all equal to one wavelength. So moving on to frequency, frequency is measured in hertz, which in SI units is per second or seconds to the minus one. So what it's looking for is how many cycles do we get through in one second? You'll see this time off plotted against time. So if we define this as one second, we can see that we get through one full cycle in one second. So that will be one hertz. Now, if I move my second to over here and say that that is now one second, we get through two full cycles in one second, so that'll be two hertz. As a last example, if I move my one second mark to just here, we now get through half a cycle, so we will be at 0.5 hertz. For wave speed, this is looking at speed of propagation of the wave, so how quickly is it moving in a certain direction? For this, we can pick a point on the wave, and see how far it travels in a certain amount of time and then just do speed equals distance over time to get the speed. For this experiment I'm going to need plane waves so to get the ripple tank set up I'm going to plug it in, I'm going to uncover the tank and fill it up full of water so about three quarters full. I'm then going to use the plane wave dipper and attach that to the post and I want the bottom of the dipper to just be touching the surface of the water. So we close the lid, we turn the waves to on and that turns the vibration generator on and then we turn the strobe on to sync and that matches the light frequency to the wave frequency. Now to get a sensible pattern all we need to do is adjust the wave frequency until we see some nice stripes. Now, if you find that your lines aren't perfectly straight, you might want to get a little bit of washing up liquid, put a bit on your finger and just wipe it around the edges of the tank and on the underside of the dipper. Let's start by taking a wavelength measurement. To help me do this, I've printed off a millimetre scale on acetate paper and I'm going to lie this in the bottom of the tank. This is going to act as our ruler or graticule for taking length measurements. Now I'm going to turn the lights off so I get a better contrast on the screen. This is the top of the ripple tank, so you can see that we've got the graticule here and we've got the plane wave dipper in, creating waves that are propagating in this direction. To measure the wavelength, I'm actually going to measure across multiple wavelengths and then divide that length by the number of wavelengths that I've got. So to show you where I'm going to go from, I think I'm going to start here and then I'm going to choose a band that matches up with the graticule nicely, so I might go down to here. So now all I need to do is just count the amount of dark fringes we've got here. So if I mark every single one, it'll be easier to count them. Boom, boom, boom. So that's the number of wavelengths that we've got. And then I need to count the amount of um, increments on the graticule I've got on this side. So again, it's going from that guy up to that guy. I won't be able to mark these on because my pen's too thick, but I'll just give them a quick count. I've done the counting and I get 24 increments in this section and 11 wavelengths here. So if we divide the distance by the total number of wavelengths, we get 2.18 millimetres. And that is my wavelength. And if we just quickly eyeball whether this is a sensible value over here, we can see that from dark band to dark band, it is just over two millimetres. So this should be accurate. To measure frequency, I now want a wave pattern that's going to move towards me nice and slowly. So for that, I'm going to elongate the wavelength using the waves knob. 
I'm going to flick the strobe onto free, which lets me independently vary the strobe from the waves and get that moving nice and slowly towards me, which is already doing actually, to be fair. And I'm going to put the strobe back onto sync and just pinpoint one of the graticules. Right, sorry, one of the lines on the graticule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the amount of time it takes for 10 waves to pass through that point. So I've got a stop clock and I'm going to flick this now back on to free. And then I'm going to hit start when the dark band just passes past my blob. So here we go. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I get a time of 10.78 seconds. So with our stopwatch, we timed that in 10.78 seconds, we traveled through 10 wavelengths. So how many wavelengths do we get through in one second? Remember that's the definition of frequency. So to get from here to here, we have to divide by 10.78. So we have to do exactly the same on that side. So if we do 10 divided by 10.78, we get uh, 0.9. Two, eight, and that is in hertz, and that is our measured frequency. And if we sense check that value for frequency against what we see on the screen, we can see that it does take about a second for consecutive dark bands to pass that point that I've marked with marker. To measure the speed of the wave, we're going to apply the equation speed equals distance over time. So in this area, this is 25 millimetres, I've counted it on the graticule. So I'm going to measure the amount of time it takes for one wave to pass between that point and that point. So let's go from here. So I'm following this wave. And I'm going to stop the clock here. So that got me 7.02 seconds. So let's do some maths. Here are our values plugged into speed equals distance over time. And this gives us a wave speed of 3.56 times 10 to the minus 4 meters per second. So that is how to directly measure wave speed, frequency and wavelength in the mini ripple tank. In my next video, I'm going to show you a way that you can calculate frequency simply by using your measured wavelength and the depth of the water. When you do it this way, you can sense check the value that you calculate for frequency using this, the strobe counter. This device will give you an accurate readout in hertz of the frequency that the ripple tank is running at. By being able to sense check that value, it will give your students the opportunity to get that positive reinforcement that the method that they've done is correct, or worst case scenario that something's gone a bit wrong and they might have to try it again. That video will be dropping next week, so don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out. Thanks for watching.